Ready? Three, two, one. Hey guys, I'm Jeremiah Battle, and today I'm gonna fuck. Willie's Network. 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 And also tell all of you guys you gotta subscribe to Willie's Network on YouTube. Hey guys, I'm Jeremiah Battle, and this is my first official video solo shooting on Willie's Network. And today, we're going to be talking about, um, I'm going to rank all of Quentin Tarantino's movies, so all from Reservoir Dogs all the way to his most recent um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So, let's get into it. Okay, so Quentin Tarantino as, oh, Willie, I know Willie's a big fan of Quentin Tarantino. He has the Pulp Fiction poster in the back. I'm a huge fan of Quentin Tarantino. He's really the guy who, like, made me fall in love with movies, and he made me... Like watching his movies inspire me to become a screenwriter and director. So he's a very impactful person in my life. And he's made quite a bit of movies, um, 10 movies, but technically nine because he counts Kill Bill Volume 1 and Volume 2 as one movie. So he technically has nine movies and he's only making one, like one more supposedly. But we're gonna be talking about his movies from best, I mean, from worst to best. Nine is the worst and one is the best, but they're all pretty good in my opinion. Okay. So coming up at number nine, we have 2007's Death Proof. Okay, this is a movie that not a lot of people like, and I, it's for good reason because his this, his filmography is so stacked, and this movie kind of feels like out of like left field. It feels like it feels like an outsider to the rest of the movies, but I still feel like it's a very good effort. Has a great um, Kurt Russell performance, and Quentin Tarantino is really good in it too. Um, he, he cameos in a lot of his movies, but th yeah, I think this is a really good movie. It's kind of like a it's a, it's a, it pays homage to the 1970s um, kind of grindhouse slasher movies in a kind of way. So I think it's, I think it's really good. Okay. Next up at number eight, we have The Hateful Eight, which is kind of funny, Eight, Hateful Eight. But yeah, this is a movie that came out in 2015. And I, like, I think this movie is really good because all of his movies are really good. But this, just like Death Proof, kind of feels like, um, I don't know, like, doesn't feel like on par with the rest of his movies even though it's even though like Quentin Tarantino is a, in my opinion he's like an above average director and this movie feels very average it doesn't feel on par with his other movies but it's still very good and has a very stacked cast it has Kurt Russell Samuel Jackson um I'm blanking on um, Channing Tatum I'm blanking on some people but it has a whole bunch of stars in it um it's very entertaining it's a contained thriller all these characters are in one cabin and it's kind of like a murder mystery trying to figure out who did what and who did what when it's really cool um yeah i think it's a good movie okay next up we have quentin tarantino's very first movie his very first um feature film reservoir dogs so this was probably like the third quentin tarantino movie i ever saw because i saw kill bill first and then i saw pulp fiction and then this is probably the the, the one i saw after those and this is his first movie ever, but it's like really, really good. It's like, I don't know. It's like, it's crazy to think that someone who's just starting out can make a movie like with this much quality, but he certainly did it. It has, um, who's in it? Um, it has Steve, Steve Buscemi, um, Steve Buscemi, Harvey Keitel, um, Michael Madsen, um, and a whole bunch of other people too like like just like the hateful eight this is a contained it's, it's like a contained um well not contained thriller but it's another movie like in one setting basically for the whole movie so it's it's isolated the characters are close it's a lot of dialogue just like all his movies but this one feels different from his other movies because it's his first movie of course but like there's a certain rawness and there's a certain hunger that you feel like when that you feel when watching it because this is his first movie and i feel like he was very hungry and he was he was very excited to get his stuff out there and it shows through this movie and it's another very good effort on his part number six we have Django and like this is I guess it's kind of high because like a lot of people love this movie but I just feel like it, like no this it's a good movie but I just feel like his other movies like the other five that I have below are just better but it's definitely a great movie um 
it's probably probably one of his most popular um yeah probably one of his most popular because if you ask someone name a quentin tarantino movie they would probably say like pulp fiction django or i don't know once upon a time in hollywood yeah um but this is yeah i'm sure all of you know um has samuel jackson in it jamie fox um what's his name uh, his name damn it um Oh, Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know how I forgot Leonardo DiCaprio's name. And it has um, Christoph Waltz in it, yeah. And this is what I love about this movie the most is we see Leonardo DiCaprio in a villain role, and we don't really see him in like in like villain roles a lot. Like he's usually playing the good guy, or like well, not really a good guy, but he's never he's never really played a villain that much. But in this movie. He's very, he's very much a villain. He's very dislikable. Um, yeah, another thing I love about this movie is that Quentin Tarantino um, he made a movie where, where the black, where the black slave gets like revenge on on the white slave masters, and I think that's really cool because you've never really seen that in a movie before. And just like he made like him like a cowboy, he's just a badass cowboy. I think that's really awesome. Um, yeah. Coming up at number five is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And it's kind of funny about this movie. Um, so when I first saw Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, like I didn't like it at all. Like I was so, I was so happy to see it because like I've been waiting for, I was waiting at, at that point when it came out, I've been waiting for two years because I heard about it a long time ago. And I kept building it up, building it up. I was like, I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see it. And in my mind, I was like building it up. Like I was building up so much intense anticipation for it. But I feel like when I saw it, it didn't, it didn't reach what I wanted it to reach because I had already built something in my mind for what I wanted it to be. But I got presented with something that was different. And after coming out the film, I was like, I didn't really like that that much. Like I want, I wanted to like it, but I didn't like it, and I felt kind of weird about it. And so then a couple, a couple months after, I bought it on um, Blu-ray, and I decided like, it's Quentin Tarantino. Like how, how do I not like a Quentin Tarantino movie with Leonardo DiCaprio and Bradley, I mean and, and Brad Pitt. And so I was like, I need, I need to watch it again. And that's what I did. I bought it, I watched it at home and I fell in love with it. I don't know what happened the first time, but definitely that, yeah, Same. definitely, definitely yeah. that second time I fell in love with it. I just loved everything about it. And it's really cool. Cause it's like a hangout movie. Like not a lot happens during the movie, but you're just like chilling with these characters. Like you're chilling with Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt. Like you're just, like you're just, like you're just hanging out with them the whole time. Like. They're just driving around LA. You're the, like you're like a fly on the wall, just like watching what they're doing. And then at the end, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but at the end, like everything that happens in the movie kind of pays off, and like you like, like you, you feel good about it because like you're like, oh, what I just watched, like it, like it clicks and it feels good. So I feel like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was a movie that I didn't like at first, but now I really love it. And it's top five Tarantino movie in my opinion. It was, yeah, it was like the same with me. Because when I first watched it, I don't know why, but like the first half of it was very confusing to yeah. me when I first watched it. But then like when I watched it, I guess like... Yeah, because like, like, yeah, like as I said, like it start, like not a lot happens. Like it's just like, yeah. you're just like chilling with them. And then like, like I was like waiting for like, okay, like what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. like, what's going to happen? And like nothing really happened. Because yeah, <laughs> exactly. then it ended and I was like, that's it. And it's, the like, ending paid off. Yeah, though. it did, definitely did. Yeah. definitely did. Yeah. All right. Coming up at number four, I have... Kill Bill Volume One and Volume Two. Technically, they're separate movies, but he, but Quentin Tarantino himself considers it one movie, so I consider it one movie. What I will say about this movie is that I enjoy the like the first volume a lot more than the second volume, but I do count them as one, so I will place them at four. So what I really like about this movie is um, definitely Uma Thurman is my favorite part of this movie. She's such a badass. She's just killing and slicing and cutting off heads and arms and limbs and all that, and I think. That's really awesome. Like like I said before, this is was one of the first Quentin Tarantino movies I saw. But when I saw it, I didn't know who Quentin Tarantino was. And so once I once I realized who Quentin Tarantino was and I found out that he directed that movie, like I was in shock because like I was like, oh I love this movie. And like I don't know, you guys probably don't know this, but like I'm a black belt in Taekwondo, so like I'm really into the martial arts and like I like martial art movies. And this is like one of the first martial art movies that I ever got exposed to. And it's really cool because like it pays homage to like um like like Bruce Lee films and a whole bunch of um 1970s kung fu movies. And I think it's really awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, she's just a badass character. All all the fight scenes are awesome, and um yeah, there's just something really 
really cool about that movie. So I definitely recommend it to you if you haven't seen it. Coming up at number three is probably one of Quentin Tarantino's like most underrated movies because not a lot of people talk about this movie. And it's funny because, um, well, I'll just say what the movie is. So the movie is Jackie Brown. And this movie came out after Pulp Fiction and like Pulp Fiction was like this huge like revolutionary thing in the industry like everyone loved um, Pulp Fiction blah, blah blah they kept talking about it, they kept talking about it and so I think when people get um, a movie from us from a person when, when people get a certain movie from a person they're expecting their next movie to be what that last movie was and Quentin Tarantino didn't do that so he made Pulp Fiction and he made Jackie Brown which is different and I think people didn't like that so they kind of wrote it off like they kind of forgot about it because I don't know, I guess they still they, they still wanted another Pulp Fiction, but Quentin Tarantino decided to make it Jackie Brown. And I think it's a really good movie. It's very underrated. It's not appreciated enough. I think um, Pam Greer in the leading role is um, a really strong, awesome character. Um, it has Samuel L. Jackson, like I said, in a lot of other movies. It has um, Robert De Niro. Um, it has, what's his face? The guy from, My, um, Michael Keaton and Robert Forrester has a whole bunch of people. Um, and yeah, I just think it's a very underrated movie. Not a lot of people talk about it. I feel like it should be appreciated more. So that's my third favorite Quentin Tarantino movie. Coming up at number one and number two are two movies that depending on the day, I could like, they could switch. But on today, number two has to be Inglorious Bastards. And why, why I say that it switches between number one and number two is because well, I'll just, I'll just say number one now. Number one is Pulp Fiction. And so on certain days, Pulp Fiction might be number one. On certain days, Inglorious Bastards might be number one. But there are two movies that that like I feel like are just on like the same like on the same level, but for different reasons. I feel like I feel like in terms of like filmmaking and like um, and like story, like just like pure story. I feel like Inglorious Bastards is a stronger movie because there's just like he just grew as because Pulp Fiction came out in 19, 1994 and Inglorious Bastards came out in 2009. So from 1994 to 2009, he's been making movies. And so you, you, and you like as you like as you make stuff and, and anything you do, as you make more stuff, you're going to learn more stuff. You're going to grow as a as a person in whatever you're doing. And you could definitely see that from Pulp Fiction to Inglorious Bastards that he grew as a filmmaker. And it shows because there's just a lot more filmmaking techniques. There's a lot more movement with the camera. Just a lot, a lot more stuff that he picked up, and it shows. But the thing with Pulp Fiction is that it just, just has this vibe that's like unmatched by anything I've ever seen in my entire life. And that was one of the, like, that was the movie that made me want to make movies. That made me want to write movies. And so I guess there's a little bit of bias, but Pulp Fiction is really good as well. Like I said, with Reservoir Dogs, his first movie, this movie also has like a certain rawness. Because Reservoir Dogs, even though it put him on the map, it didn't really like, it wasn't like, he wasn't like a big name or anything. He was just like, he was just, he crept in the industry, but this movie really blew him up. And like, you could see that rawness, that hunger, that drive that he really wanted to like, he really wanted to show people what he had and Pulp Fiction definitely did that. Um, yeah, so Inglorious Bastards is my number two. And Pulp, Fiction, Pulp Fiction is my favorite Quentin Tarantino movie today. It might be Inglorious Bastards tomorrow. I don't know, but today is Pulp Fiction. So thank you guys for watching the first video in a little series we're calling Battle in Hollywood. Um, this is my first like full video solo on the channel. So I'm very happy about that. If you haven't already, make sure you go on the website, cop the merch. Everyone on the network's basically got one. This is mine. Um, pretty nice, pretty nice, pretty nice. But um, yeah, again, thank you for watching the video. If you haven't already subscribed, subscribe, like the video. You know what to do, so thank you. I'm best to raise down and out.